Hello, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome everybody. We are delighted that you joined us today. I'm Maureen Blanford. I'm VP of Marketing here at GiftSmart. And perhaps more importantly today, a former Girl Scout and a former Girl Scout leader. Uh, and welcome to all of you fabulous fundraisers. Uh, I'm not sure about you, but I think we're starting to see some bright lights ahead. So it's nice to gather weekly uh, to see how we're doing. So it continues to be a privilege to share outside the box and outside the room fundraising successes, and today is no different. Uh, we are at the third episode in our Outside the Room fundraising success series, and really just doing this work in the hopes that we can continue to inspire each other in the art of the possible. And speaking about outside the room and outside the box, we're joined by power duo today, Jody Hudson, Director of Development, and Tiffany Rodriguez, Donor Relations Coordinator, Girl Scouts of Central California South. Jody and Tiffany, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, thank so, you much so much for having, for having us. us. Yep, we're super excited. Can you tell yeah. we talk at the same time too? <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Um, also, joining, also joining us today, our very own community manager, Susanna Crawford. Uh, and Patrick Clore, GiveSmart's Head of Customer Insights and both deeply experienced fundraisers in their own right. Susanna, Patrick, thanks to you for joining today. Absolutely, thanks appreciate them both. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so we've got about 30 to 35 minutes of content and then we've asked Jody and Tiffany if they can hang out for a little bit to answer questions. So please go ahead and, and pop in your questions as you think of them and we'll get to those uh, at the end of the conversation. Uh, a few notes about resources. Uh, so we have, and this will be over in the chat, you can find resources, customer success stories. We're focusing on outside the room in, in these Thursday uh, afternoon uh, success stories. But if, if there are those of you who have joined us today who are still thinking about a pivot uh, from a live event or a gala, we also have plenty of resources and content and data for you in our pivot success series. So that will be over in the, the chat. Either way, you can count on us nearly every Thursday afternoon to bring you a live fundraising success story. And with that, let's get a pulse on, on how you're feeling today. So we'd love to just populate the poll and get some feedback from you all. Um, so regarding your, if your fiscal year ends at the end of the calendar year, how confident are you that you'll hit your goal this year? If you can weigh in on if you're not feeling that great about it, or if you think you're getting there, um, maybe you're at the point already where you're for sure you'll hit it, or you might surpass it with all this kind of new thinking. And while folks are weighing in, Tiffany, can you just share with us at a high level, tell us your mission and, and in particular how you tailor that to your region. Yeah, so our mission is we are Girl Scouts builds girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place. And the way we tailor that, it's really easy for us. It's all about our girls. So looking at giving girls experiences that will educate them for their future. So something in ag and um, giving them those experiences or whether it is getting funds for scholarships for girls to continue their education, get higher education in um, the fields that they want to practice. It's for us all about the girls. So um, it's very easy to tailor our mission to um, what our end goal is. Perfect. Ah, and with that, great timing there. Um, so Patrick, I know you're following the data pretty closely. Um, how does how does this resonate for you? Uh, it it resonates a good amount and in an exciting way. Um, and I'm actually looking at the two weeks um, that we did this before. So uh, we are seeing positive growth in terms of, of people getting the confidence or, um, you know, where we're seeing the biggest decrease is two weeks ago that not so hot was at 43%. Um, so all of the other things are good. But to me, that's uh, definitely the most exciting part. Perfect. Um, terrific. All right. Well, then with that, we can um, there we go. Poll is gone. Not sure why I couldn't articulate that. Um, so today what we're going to cover is, is, is this team is doing some really unique stuff and has some unique takes on, uh, on virtual versus, uh, live, but, but this, this team is doing such interesting work, thinking outside the box and drawing their donors closer and continuing to fundraise. Uh, so Suzanne is going to help facilitate us through a lot of the fundraising elements that they're working on. Uh, Patrick will come in at the end just to share some data points that are probably going to be interesting to almost everyone joining today. And then we will definitely have uh, time for, for your questions at the end. 
Susanna, can you guide us through some of the, the more unique fundraising elements that, that these folks have been working on? Absolutely, I'm, ha I'm happy to, thanks. So as you can see on this map, the Girl Scouts of Central California South's region includes five different counties that they support. Um, this is pretty unique. So I'm curious, Jody, if you can start off with us um, and kind of tell us about your initial success and how you kind of expanded into serving all of these different counties. Absolutely. So, you know, it is a challenge when you are so spread out and you have a five county footprint. But what we did is we looked at our past successes and where we were very strong. And it was our Women Inspiring Girls Society Award that we had already launched in Fresno County and already launched in Kern County. So we said that is going to be our signature event. That is the event that is going to unite us as we are geographically spread out. So for 2020, we um, had made great plans of uh, replicating this successful event in all five of our counties. And what that did for us is it allowed us to recognize and celebrate the incredible women in each of these um, counties and communities, but also it gave us that opportunity to engage with new donors and to build lifetime donors because they had a commitment to not only these incredible role models, but to our girls as well. So I think that's really important with any sort of fundraising efforts. You've got to find that one signature, that one niche that really sets you apart from everybody else. Absolutely. I think this is really well done um, as well. And so we can kind of go into the next slide here too. And talking a little bit about this event and how you pick these women, can you talk a little bit about you know, awards and trophies and highlighting people and how you did this and how did this really enhance your fundraising? Right, so we really looked at each um, community in, in each of our five counties and thought, you know, who really represents that community, that, that county best? And so we went through that whole um, selection process and really focused on if we were a girl who would we look up to who would be that really significant role model in each of those communities so um, those are the women that we we honored and then once we sat down and we met with them we you know gleaned from them who supported them who was there for them and so then we reached out to those individuals to start tailor making our sponsorship levels and you know getting that support early on to um you know help make this event successful and as far as the awards go um you know it really is just the you know the women inspiring girls awards it's it's something that's um a lifelong um award for them and it's not something that ends that evening you know, we really look at women that are going to be able to continue to, to build relationships with Girl Scouts, continue to be able to engage other donors to Girl Scouts. So it's a very um, well thought out process that we go through when we honor these amazing women. That's fantastic. Just bringing more people to empower and people to look up to in the community. I just so admire this. And I think this is just a fantastic event. Um, that's great. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to keep going. Great. On to this. And so I know that you guys have the what it should have been the final event um, coming up in just a short month. So kind of tell me about with everything that's going on in the world, where are you at now with this? So specifically with, with this um, event right here that was supposed to take place? Yes. Yes. So obviously we, you know, aren't meeting um, in person. And so we've put a pause on this event right now. But what um, Tiffany and I have had to do is we've had to really sit down and reimagine fundraising and really pivot our fundraising efforts from um, traditional, um, you know, in-person events to more of campaigns, to, to more of asks. So right now we have put the Women Inspiring Girl Society Awards on pause, and we've really delved more into community um, issues. Obviously, with COVID-19, um, you know, we really uh, were at the front lines helping um, 
you know, to show support for our professional healthcare workers and just having more meaningful experiences. And so that's what we are doing as we move forward. We are launching a new free membership campaign where we feel that the asks that we um, are doing right now with our donors have a lot more impact. Not taking anything away from this event, but I think donors are feeling very, um, you know, they've got a lot of empathy for youth and the things that have been taken away from our youth. So I think it's a really great opportunity for us to engage and ask new donors to really invest in our youth, let kids be kids again, and, you know, help support these, uh, our free membership campaign. So I think that's what we, we all have to do right now during this time. You have to really make sure that you are having meaningful asks and something that really creates a good ROI for your donor. Absolutely. Yeah, it's great to be thinking outside the room and thinking outside. And I know you guys have changed um, directions here as well and come up with different ideas on how to move on. Um, so with this, kind of talking about the all girls opportunity that you kind of jumped into, can you tell me a little bit about this campaign and how this kind of took off and how people are feeling about it? Yep. So I'm going to have Tiffany um, cover this one for us. Perfect. Yeah. So we were looking at our overall year, what we had planned and what was no longer going to happen. So in doing that, we realized that we, for us, we heavily rely on hosting fundraising events like the Women Inspiring Girls Awards. So we needed to figure out what is a way that we could still secure those same funds without holding an event. Um, we did do our homework on virtual events. It just wasn't something that we felt was for us. Not, it's not for everyone. Sure. So um, in looking at that, we actually came up with um, this campaign, our all girls. So every girl deserves the opportunity to be a Girl Scout. We decided instead of asking our event sponsors to sponsor an event, we're actually asking them to sponsor a girl's experience. So, and um, their donation actually goes even further, which is something that um, our donors are really liking is the fact that we are not paying for uh, facilities or for food, that that donation completely goes back to the girls. So that was a plus there. And we actually did our sponsor levels based off of uh, our previous event sponsor levels. So the 150 that um, $150 sponsors a girl for an entire year, that is actually what our ticket price used to be for our events. Yeah, perfect, there we go. So 150, same, um, covers the cost of one girl. Previously, that used to be a ticket expense to come to an event. So I think the fact that our donors are able to look at this and say, wow, I mean, instead of paying to go to an event, paying a ticket price, I can actually cover the cost of a Girl Scout for an entire year. So it was a real easy pivot for us. That is fantastic. I think something we're hearing so common is, you know, what do we do with sponsorships and tickets and all these different things, you know, that aren't happening now with in-person events. So I'm curious, how have your sponsors reacted to this? I'm sorry, can you say that again? I cut out just a little bit. Oh, no problem at all. Um, how did your how did your sponsors react to kind of the pivot into other sponsorships? So they reacted really well. Um, it was it's very exciting. Um, we're reaching out to everyone who previously sponsored and saying, "Listen, we're not going to be able to hold these events this year, but still want your support. We don't want to lose those dollars, and our girls especially need those dollars now more than ever." Yes. Um, as they get more and more things taken away from them, um, you know, a lot of kids are at home with no activities to do. And so we really, and parents as well, you know, some may have lost jobs or looking at their budget. It may not be something that girls can or families can afford to continue on with. And we don't sure. want to take anything else away from the girls. So to bring that to a donor, how can you say, uh, no, I really would rather go to the event. <laughs> right. you're, kind of, you're kind of backing them in a corner in a good way. 
So yeah, your mission is still valuable. Yeah, yeah. So so far, it's going great. Fantastic. All right. I'm so glad to hear that. And here's a kind of an example on the screen now of, of how you guys set this up. Can you tell me just a few key components that you did when you were setting it up? Kind of what is the communication around this? And really, what is that messaging that you wanted to bring here? Sure. So we yeah. kind of have a one, two. Um, Go ahead, Jody. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> we have a sort of one, two punch with this membership campaign. So our our initial um, ask was this letter that's uh, presented here on, on the screen, just you know, giving our donors a little bit of history of what we've been, what the Girl Scouts have been doing, how we pivoted um, right after you know cookie season, going into helping to support our hometown heroes, and you can see the picture there of our girls leading a cookie caravan parade and just letting reminding our donors know how significant girl scouts are to the community you know we don't just um survive we thrive right and then guiding them through how we have been thriving as a council there's a lot of um, organizations that are paralyzed right now and they are not um pivoting as quickly with virtual programming and you know taking opportunity of that where our team has just been so creative and thinking outside the box. I mean, I'm just impressed with everything that our girl experience team is doing. And then we, you know, remind um, our donors that, you know, our families are, are struggling and there's, you know, a lot of financial hardships and we don't want the cost of a girl um, experience to, you know, create another hardship for the, the family. So you tell them the story, right? You're, you're painting this story and then at the end, we're asking them to adopt a, a Girl Scout or a troop, help them to continue to keep that one constant alive, the Girl Scout experience. And so like Tiffany so beautifully said, you kind of have them backed in the corner. Who is not going to want to say, oh my gosh, for $40, $100, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm all in. I want to I want to help kids be kids again. I think our youth have had to grow up so quickly within the last couple of months. And I think anything that donors can do to just bring a little bit of um, normal routine back to our children, I think they're all in. So I think this campaign is gonna be very successful. We just launched um, this letter this week. We're following it up with social media. In the next week or two, we're gonna do a video email just reminding people about our membership campaign. So it's the, the one-two punch. <laughs> I love it. Um, I have a quick question for you guys, because one of the things we hear um, these success webinars, you know, monthly where, you know, we have probably 5000 uh, folks who are coming uh, overall. And one of the things we hear is, are people still willing to give and, and can we still ask in this climate? So what are you hearing from your community? Um, are you getting pushback there or, or, or is your donor community happy to have these opportunities? So, you know, in, in the beginning, you know, Tiffany and I talked about that and it's all about sensitivity and we did not reach out to our donors right in the beginning because we needed everybody like ourselves to process. I mean, it was heavy, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and then after a while we thought, okay, now we can reach out to them out of care, out of, hey, we're just doing like a wellness check on you. You know, how are you doing? And we just want you to know that you know, our Girl Scout program is still thriving. We're doing the, the virtual programming. We're, we're doing all this, um, you know, we, we, we are still communicating with our girls. We haven't forgotten about our girls. And then Giving Tuesday came along and we had a very successful um, Giving Tuesday campaign. And we thought, okay, you know what? Donors are, they've processed it. They know what pockets that they want to give to. And now I feel like, they have come out of the humanitarian efforts, the COVID, um, and now they're really getting back into their core, um, uh, you know, uh, markets, their, their core um, organizations that they want to give to. So I think this is just a perfect timing for our membership campaign. And, and I feel, again, like I said, I mean, I think our donors just want kids to be kids and they really are gonna support this campaign. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, and you had just mentioned Giving Tuesday and a donation day as well. So I know a lot of people kind of struggle with running multiple campaigns at one time. 
So I'm curious to you guys, kind of, what are your thoughts when running multiple campaigns and how do you internally, you know, kind of put your resources to either or how does that work for you? Tiffany, do you want to take that so and then I'll Yeah, absolutely. So for us, we look at all of our donors on a whole. Um, we run a report, get a list, and then we actually separate them out. So we are deciding who we are going to send what information for what campaign. So that way we are handpicking these donors. I mean, no one knows our donors like we do. So that way we can say, no, um, you know, our donor, John Smith, he is all about Giving Tuesday and he is gonna, he's just gonna love this. So he does a big donation every year. So we're gonna make sure that we, you know, go to him for our Giving Tuesday versus a different campaign. So, Absolutely. yeah, for us, yeah. Very selective in, in who you're, um, you know, going to be targeting for all of your campaigns and, and you don't want to hit up your donors for every campaign. Um, so absolutely what Tiffany said, you just have to be selective. Fantastic. I think that's great. Separating your donors and really understanding your audiences think it's going to be the key to any success. And and taking that on kind of a pivot here, this is a really fun one that you guys did, another campaign you ran. Um, can you tell me the story behind this and yeah. what made you guys do this? This this was really um, a silver lining campaign. So we were on our home stretch with a fabulous cookie season. We are number one in growth throughout the, the nation and our girls were just high-fiving it. We um, had a new cookie donor buyout program. I mean, all, all, you know, fires were burning. We were just go, go, go and then COVID hit and wiped out our last week of cookie sales. So immediately we pivoted and we wanted to help assist those girls that still um, had excess cookie inventory level. So we thought, how, how do we do that? Well, what we do is we ask our donors to make a donation to this cookie relief fund program and then we gave them choices. With your donation, you can either keep the cookies you can pay it forward and donate to another charity like Boys and Girls Club or Ronald McDonald House, or better yet, you can help us with our cookie caravan parades and give those cookies to our professional healthcare workers. And this took off. Everybody, you know, when you're, when you're in this pandemic and you want to do something, but you don't know what to do, this was a perfect opportunity for people to take that action. And so we, um, for the whole month of, you know, March going into a little bit of April, we're leading these cookie caravan parades and we were on the front page news and it was like Girl Scouts to the rescue. It was such a great feel good um, story that we were able to engage our, our donors with and, and they just loved it. That is so amazing, getting out there, getting recognition, and it just sounds like you're just rolling with the punches of what's going on, finding the needs of what needs to be had and making it happen. Um, I'll pass this one over to, to Patrick Clore to kind of talk about, he's so excited about this campaign. <laughs> I, I am. Uh, these two things resonated as we kind of were getting stuff ready. Um, and so, you know, in a minute, we'll talk through data and different insights um, from a quantitative standpoint, but uh, in terms of, of things that we see in stories that that I wanted to make sure we took a chance to share with everybody today is silly things matter and little things matter. And, and I think they matter probably now more than ever. Um, and so, you know, a few weeks ago, we talked with an organization out of Goldsboro, North Carolina, which is literally the complete opposite side of the country from um, the Fresno, California area. Uh, and they had done a self, selfie scavenger hunt. Um, to kind of engage people and, and keep their community active. Uh, and this gratitude scavenger hunt is something that, that blew me away, as well as this kindness counts. Um, and so, you know, Jody and Tiffany, if you guys want to talk about it, but I think more than anything, the main, the main thing I, that resonated with me is it's, it's zero dollar things that whether they generate revenue or not, it seems like a moot point because they keep people active. And when people do have so many distractions, um, I think, you know, these sort of things are great. So I'd love if you guys could could talk about these because I think each of them is is just fantastic work. Sure. Go ahead, Tiffany. Yeah. So during these crazy times, I mean, it's so easy. The truth, the truth is it's so easy to fall to dark places, right? So we figured, you know, 
we have the seeds, we need to make sure that um, we plant flowers in everyone's mind and not weeds. So in sharing this kindness counts, we wanted to really give, give everyone a chance to be uplifted, remind everyone to be kind to each other, to do something nice for someone and to recognize our leaders who are doing that. And so to just basically try and put everyone in a positive mindset and recognize our amazing leaders while doing it. Love it. Uh, it's just, I love it. And I, as Patrick has been kind of evangelizing this behind the scenes, uh, I think that that really resonates because we, we do hear this a lot from people. How do we ask people to donate uh, at this point? And there are things that you can do that, that don't cost anything and, and keep your donors closer. So uh, this, was, this was just joy for us to talk about internally. And with that, Tiffany and Jody, you guys get to take just a little break uh, while Patrick runs through some data. Uh, for us, and then we'll come right back to you for some Q&A. Folks, keep the questions coming in. Um, we will get to as many of them as we can. Uh, and any that we don't get to today, we will our team will follow up with you separately. And now over to you, Patrick, on data. Perfect. Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, so in, in trying to get some reports together to just throw some things in Excel and see what sticks out, um, I was looking back at previous episodes to see some of the stuff that we had shared, and so curiosity came into play. And uh, I was curious, two weeks ago with our first episode of this Outside the Room series, um, you know, the data at that point was that 83% of organizations had ran one campaign versus 17 who, similar to Tiffany and Jody, had ran uh, multiple campaigns. So fast forward three weeks, um, actually re-ran the algorithm a few times um, just to fact check because it, it was caught me by surprise to say the least, is that in just two weeks time, we've seen a 3% lift um, in terms of organizations running multiple campaigns. Uh, and that is fantastic to see. And the main reason that, you know, we want to keep talking about these things that you can do in different ways to engage people, because I think, you know, the more things you do, obviously, you know, the revenue is going to be there, the donors are going to be there, you expand your reach and bring people back, um, you know, across the board. Um, so it was just great to see this overall in, in terms of that growth. And I think especially, you know, if you are an organization whose fiscal year ends ends or begins um you know in the summer months there's no better way to either close or open the books um than by doing some things to uh to bring it on hand and then on the next one here um is obviously with all analysis and insights similar to you know um i think what we talked about with the women empowering girls you know event is is it's hard to balance recency with historical information at the moment um, so I was curious to give it a shot and it was intrigued. So at the very end of 2018, we conducted a pretty extensive donor study. Um, and the thing that we were most excited by at that time was learning that donors are willing to give four to 10 times a year um, and that they actually prefer to give via technology in some way. Um, and it was funny because the quote that we had on some marketing material um, was, don't be worried about asking now with a virtual event or donation campaign. And then again, in a month or two, um, which again, I double take because uh, it's almost like there was a crystal ball at the end of 2018, because I think that resonates now more than ever. So then as we look into the recency, um, those numbers hold up again, because we separated the data from the entire database um, into kind of pre-COVID in the middle of March, and then everything has taken place since. And what we saw is um, that that four to 10 times still holds true, because if you multiply that the average person gave about two times. Um, remember, it's only five months of the year, so the trend line is perfectly good there. Um, but even more encouraging to me was seeing the number of people who are giving um, grow by 76%. Um, that is one of the most encouraging things and, and best pieces of information I could give people in terms of optimism um, overall. And so I think it's you know keeping going with some of the things that we've talked about earlier in this episode, um, and also that the number of people who are actively participating, so people who are bidding, people who are donating in campaigns, um, is actually up as well. So, you know, those people who you are engaging in, in stuff like that, I think, um, you know, we want to talk about running multiple campaigns and some ways you can do it. Um, and it's, you know, this subset was kind of looking at, at donations specifically, um, but very much encouragement um, overall. And then in terms of the uh, next one here, kind of the final slide is, 
running multiple campaigns right now where we talk about donations because we see it but um, beyond just donations this is the up to two hours ago uh, analysis from the entire database where again we looked at pre-covid and post-covid to see how are people raising money and what's sticking out and in, in what you know comes to the forefront uh, and so certainly i don't think it is a surprise to see that donations are the number one fundraising generator at the moment um, but to me the percentage uh, where it was 11 percent and now it's 45 that's a world of a world of difference and so i think making sure that um, the reason I, I want to share it and bring it up isn't just so we can have numbers on a on a screen because i think we all get enough of that um, it's because this is what's working and this is what your peers are seeing to be successful this is what donors are willing to give um, and we want to make sure that that we share it so that everyone listening can benefit it from it in some way shape or form um, and then also exciting was seeing uh, that silent auctions are still generating revenue um, and actually performing better than it was pre-COVID. Um, and I know we put together a pretty robust silent auction study. Um, the timing was a little bit unfortunate. We released it at the beginning of March. Um, so I think it got a little <laughs> buried in the time frame, but um, would be a great resource to put in the chat and we can send to people um, because we kind of broke it down by region um, and, and did a great job with that. Uh, and then the final category that, that we're seeing a trend with um, is instant buys, which in our system is sign up parties, merchandise, um, basically anything where I select it and it gets immediately added to my cart. Um, and so that's doubled in terms of revenue. Uh, and so I think, you know, what is fun is, is a lot of these things are a, a lower cost um, to entry. So being able to dry some creative things. And, and once again, that's where um, the gratitude scavenger hunt is my favorite thing I've seen um, because I think the simplicity and the silliness of all of these things um, and so you know we're seeing a lot of good trends but uh, we don't want to just sit on it because there's no value so um, definitely you know if people have questions of different things we're always happy to, to take a look um, but uh, overall very uh, very encouraged by what we're seeing love it thanks Patrick and you get also a little break here um, before we head into Q&A y'all just a reminder that next week um, yeah, next week. Wow. <laughs> um, June 23rd, we've got our monthly webinar uh, on giving campaigns to run this summer. We know the summer is usually slow and that cannot be slow this year for fundraisers. So a lot of good ideas in that if you want to join us. Um, and with that, we're going to turn to questions now. So we've got a lot of good ones coming in uh, and we're going to get to as many as we can uh, in the next probably 15 minutes. So let's start with this. Jody or Tiffany, can you expand on how you incorporate the award winners in your fundraising around the award events? Tiffany, do you want to go ahead and take that? Yeah. So um, the way we incorporate them is right from the get-go we actually ask our honorees for a list of about 20 people who um, they feel should be there who they think could be good connections for us good donors who would be all about our message and support us and then we make sure um, we do the ask uh, on their behalf and it always works out really well when you say that you're there for someone that they look up to or that they support and you're asking them to sponsor a table in honor of that honoree, I mean, it always works out really well. We always have a packed house. And then we really take those honorees um, and after the event is over, we meet with them separately and just ask how they see their future with us and how they see staying involved with us. And then we go from there, whether it's supporting a certain program or whether um, we've had um, one of our past honorees actually fundraise for us with an endowment, a medical endowment. And so that is huge that she went out and secured that for our girls. So um, really giving your honorees the power to um, guide you actually in your fundraising efforts. What I hope that point. answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, that you slayed, that was awesome. Um, Jody, <laughs> uh, a, a, a multi-part multi question. Was Giving Tuesday now successful? Did you hit your goal and any tips around what you would improve or what helped you succeed on that campaign? So overall, tell us about your Giving Tuesday. 
Yeah, so absolutely. Um, as I had told you earlier, um, I just came on board with Girl Scouts in December. So historically, we have not had a very um, good Giving Tuesday. It's kind of fallen flat. So we really sat down and tried to figure out how we could, you know, again, do like a, a one-two punch sort of thing. So we um, looked at different um, uh, messaging. We did a, a social media message. We did a um, video message to all of our donors. I think it's super important to make sure that you're hitting up donors different ways, you know, not the, the same old, you know, letter or, or phone call. You got to be creative. So we did um, a really great um, video to our donors from everybody on our team, um, you know, encouraging them to, to give to, to Giving Tuesday now that Girl Scouts has always been there for them and they need to now be there for our girls. And we also um, did a text to give campaign. So basically there was no way that they could not see our campaign, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we, we did well, we did about $5,000. So, I mean, our CEO and um, you know team, they were like, dang, that's great. We've never done that you know, well before. So. We did a recap from it and you know there's definitely things that we can build on for next year but i believe just that whole creativity and, and making sure you hit every single angle in your messaging that really worked well for us perfect fast and furious here ladies so um it, tiffany or jody but uh the gratitude scavenger hunt was it sent to donors or girls and can you tell us more about how that worked and how it was promoted tiffany i'll let you take that one okay so um, it was actually originally done for our leaders. Um, like I mentioned before, it was just, you know, negative times with everything that was going on. So we really wanted to lighten everyone's mood. And um, but it was something that actually took off. So um, we share it on our Facebook. So our donors do see it. They see that we are working for working hard towards positive change right now towards um pushing forward and just really trying to get everyone to be happy again yeah absolutely yeah love it um patrick question for you should we run a silent auction today do they work still um yes i think um I will avoid answering it with numbers, which is my my tendency, um, but definitely are still performing well um, overall. And I think it is um, a nice mix up where, uh, you know, there is so many things now that are straight donation campaigns. So I think people being creative, you know, and um, coupling a few auction items in to, to mix it up or different things like that, um, you know, given everything that is happening, uh, I would I would stay away from things that are you know sporting events or kind of live events in general just because that's that's in a state of flux um, you know and it might be hard to secure and different things like that um, but I think you know things that supporting the community I think more than ever is those kind of items um, and you know we've always seen kind of date night uh, packages or, or things of that nature that combine a few different things. Um, so I think especially, you know, I live in the Chicagoland area and I'm very excited, like the lakefront opens up for the first time in three months. Um, and so I'm going to go visit my coffee shop that I haven't been able to go to. And I think there's probably a lot of people who, you know, within the community can do it. And I think that it also brings people together. Um, it might be a good chance to interact with some of these, um, you know, organizations that have supported you in the past. Um, but overall, definitely still performing and, and just uh, I think it gives an opportunity to look at it maybe a little bit differently. Perfect. Thanks, Patrick. Um, Jody or Tiffany, what kind of fundraising elements do you use in the awards events? Raffles, auctions, what's worked? Tiffany, you want to go ahead and answer that one? Yeah. So um, in the past, we have done silent auctions and um, that has worked really well. Um, we generally try to get um, around, um, around 30 to 50 items. That's not something we're doing right now though, um, but in the past when everything, you know, before all the chaos happened, it did work really well for us, the silent auctions. And we would just reach out to our community, get the um, pieces donated, and we actually, um, it was kind of a win-win because we would let those companies know, you know, your company is going to be promoted at this event. So through the silent auction. 
And so people were more than willing to um, donate to us given the uh, free promo uh, chance. Uh, fabulous, thanks for that tie-in. Susanna, follow-up question, instant buy items. I just lost it. Um, any um, instant buy items that are working right now in current conditions? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of different stuff. And what I would encourage you first to do is really think about what makes you guys unique um, and what you could sell. So a few different things is like merchandise. So people taking like what would be a school, you know, shirts, t-shirts, bumper stickers and putting it online. Um, another huge thing that's going on is just creating a raffle. Um, so just a one-time thing that people can purchase a game of chance. Another one's virtual sign-up parties. So if you're a museum, if you have different stuff that you could show, or even if you just want, you know, a bunch of kids to come together and play for a half an hour, um, a sign-up party is a different type of option. Um, there's also stuff, instead of doing a silent auction and putting stuff up for bidding, just kind of taking items and putting them for sale. Um, I've actually seen one recently that was kind of like a garage sale type of thing, and it actually turned out really well. Um, so I would think about who are your constituents? What are they interested in purchasing? Are they going outside now? Are they just sitting at home? What are those items that they could use now uh, while they're at home? Perfect. Thanks, Susanna. Um, all right. So how does Girl Scouts keep the fundraising momentum going through throughout the summer? And is that something, is that new for this year? Or have you traditionally worked to fundraise all around, all year round? Well, I think we traditionally have worked to, to fundraise all year long with our um, WIG signature events. But like I said earlier, we really have reimagined our fundraising efforts and pivoted more to campaigns, more to, you know, more meaningful campaigns. So we've got the membership going on right now. Next month, we are going to be um, in partnership with uh, another organization out in the west side in the rural area. So we're going to start a campaign based upon that um, uh, opening ceremony and reach out to our you know target market of our ag based donors and then uh, continue that into September with an agronation event going after those individuals um, in the ag business and other um, areas to to support that so really we we've kind of taken the mindset off of the traditional fundraising efforts and going more for the um, meaningful ROIs with our with our donors through these um, membership ask campaigns. Cool, thank you. Um, and then a question on what platform do you use for your video messages to donors? For the video messages, we use uh, Network for Good. Oh, perfect. Um, Okay, then with that, uh, Patrick, anything to add here before we close? No, I think just, I mean, another massive, uh, massive amount of kudos um, to Tiffany and Jody and their team for, for the work they've done. And, uh, you know, hopefully for everybody else, it's, uh, it sparks a few ideas. Perfect, perfect. So with that, Jody and Tiffany, uh, thank you so much for joining today and sharing these insights. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having us and um, please feel free to share our emails if anyone has any other questions that they can think of to reach out to us. Absolutely. I mean, ditto to what Tiffany said. We are here to um, help everyone um, because we know people have helped us, right? There's strength in numbers. So um, I think we just have to keep moving forward, be positive, always choose joy and know that, you know, things are going to get better. Oh, absolutely. Thanks, guys. And Suzanne and Patrick, thanks so much for, for joining today for the two of you. True absolutely. pleasure. And thanks to all of you for joining. We are here for all of you. We're rooting for you. And do not hesitate to reach out if we can help you continue to move towards your goals. And with that, have a 